So in this lecture, we're going to discuss the Khan Ingold Prelog Priority System. Now the system is used for either one of two things. It's either used in determining the absolute configuration of your enantiomers, so either R or S absolute configuration, or it's used to help you arrange groups attached to double bonds. So in this lecture, we're going to focus primarily on this usage here. So, when, whenever you're using this system, four important rules must be followed that will help you to get or find the highest priority groups. So let's look at rule number one. So atom with higher atomic number receives higher priority. So let's see what that means via this example. So here we have a carbon-carbon double bond. So let's examine this carbon, carbon number one. So carbon number one is attached to two groups. It's either attached to the H or it's attached to the carbon here. So which atom has a higher atomic number? Well clearly the carbon has a higher atomic number and that means this group attached to this carbon has a higher priority than this group here. Likewise, let's examine the second carbon. The second carbon of the double bond is also attached to a carbon and it's also attached to an H. Which one of these two groups has a higher atomic number? Well, clearly the carbon has a higher atomic number and so the carbon wins. And let's label it with an asterisk. So, notice that in this compound, our groups with the higher priorities are on the same side of the double bond and that means this must be a Z isomer. So let's look at rule number two. For isotopes, the isotope with the higher atomic weight wins. Remember, two compounds or two atoms are isotopes if they have the same number of protons and electrons but different number of neutrons. So they differ in atomic weight. So let's look at the following example. Let's suppose we have a carbon-carbon double bond. So let's examine this carbon here. This carbon is attached to an H group and also to a D group. D is simply deuterium. It's the isotope of H. So since D has a higher atomic weight, D must have a higher priority than H. So this group has a higher priority than this group. Likewise, for the second carbon in the double bond, we have the following two groups. Once again, we have the H and we have the D. So our D, the deuterium, has a higher atomic weight, so it has a higher priority. And now we have an alkene where our two higher priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. And that means this must be an E isomer. So let's look at rule number three. If we have the same atom, if we have a tie between our atoms, we move to the next atom. So let's see exactly what that means. Let's look at the following example. We have a carbon-carbon double bond. So let's begin with this carbon, the first carbon in the double bond. So this carbon is attached to a carbon on this side and a carbon on that side. So, so far we have a tie. We can't determine the atomic number. So we move on to the next atom. So there is no next atom here. But here we have a following carbon atom. So that means this side wins. It has a higher atomic number and it also has a higher atomic weight. So this side, this group, has a higher priority than the lower group. Likewise, for this carbon, we have the same exact situation. So once again, as the first example, we have the Z isomer because our two higher priority groups are on the same side. Finally, let's look at rule number four. A double bond to a carbon is considered as two single bonds. So let's see exactly what that means. Let's suppose we have our double bond here, so a carbon-carbon double bond. We want to examine the groups attached to our first carbon. So here we have a carbon and a carbon. So, so far, no one wins. And a carbon and a carbon. So no one wins. But we have a double bond here. 
And this double bond, according to rule number four, is actually, or actually it looks something like this. So every double bond is considered as having two single bonds. So we erase this double bond and we replace one carbon and a second carbon. So two more single covalent bonds. So now this side, this group has a higher atomic weight and so this group wins. And this group must be the higher priority group. Now on this side of the carbon, we have two identical methyl groups. So we have carbon and carbon. So no one wins here. And so for this carbon, the con in lock pre lock priority system does not work. It yields two groups with the same exact priority.